And even in Nigeria today, the richest people are not people who are into oil business. Everybody cannot be into oil business. The precious nature of our environment is so huge. The pharmacy industry is huge, bigger than the oil industry. Yet, we have so much herbs in the forest that we can tap and make the paracetamols that we need. We, in my trip, I saw herbs that instant healers, instant, as you cut it, you put it in your eyes, or you put it in your mouth, put it in your nose, your headache goes. Instant stomach cure. We have been sold a dummy in this world that anything that emanates from Africa is no good. And we are buying into it. So my life is full, is a life of an activist, whether I'm into real activist or I'm into as entrepreneur. My entrepreneurship is about passion. My passion is why should I don't hate white people, but I hate the injustice that comes with their mentality. Okay? Why should I go to Miami and be looking around rivers? You know, take a boat cruise. For God's sake. There are so many rivers in Ekremo. There are so many rivers in Nembeo. Yeah. You can take a boat cruise from Lagos and take and that's my, my next project. You see why piracy dominates is that when you don't create opportunities, look in between and say, let me create opportunities for people. If the whole place in the Niger Delta is full of cruise ships, piracy will disappear because the one that you are coming to catch this man and by the time you move one, two, three, you see another ship. By the time you move one, two, three, ship, it becomes, it fiddles away. With time it will fiddle away if you don't start something. So what I'm saying is that one day I will do a boat cruise that is akin to the Miami boat cruises that people like us, rich people, go and say they are enjoying life. The life I enjoyed for 14 days in the forest is not comparable to anywhere. And the white people, the typical white people who are coming on tourism and all day, they, they don't want to come and see this castle. This castle, it means nothing to them. Because they have far more than this castle in their areas. When they come, they ask them, they will say, I'm not interested in seeing block buildings because I have seen too many block buildings. They are interested in the natural environment where their legs will be soiled and they will be happy. You say, darn it, ah, see my, and all that. Create beds, create this thing. So they deceive us by building all these things and then we go there and they will say, oh, I was there, I was there. I'm not I, I, I'm not, I'm not against people who have been there, but for God's sake, let us look inwards. The other thing is storytelling. You are journalists. Storytelling has caused us part what we, I mean, brought us to our place, like a third um, level of civilization. They have told stories around themselves. It is whatever thing you write, and after 30, 40, 50 years you die, that story remains as a story. Okay? So we go to abroad and then we say, oh, uh, this, um, this, this thing was founded by Christopher Columbus in the 1850s. He did this. When he was coming, he was attacked by this thing. For God's sake, I can sit down here and imagine a story around a tree in the Niger Delta, and I will write that story that that tree has been there for 500, 600 years. Who are you to dispute it? My father has told me, and my father told me that my father told me, and my father told me, and that in fact that tree came as a magic, that it was one little girl that was being oppressed, and then she just did like this, and the tree came. <laughs> and when, they hear, when we hear this kind of story, it mesmerizes us. The same way when the stories, if we write the stories and put it there in the forest and create station one, station two, station three, station four. This station is the place that somebody wanted to rape a girl and the girl vanished. Hmm. This station is a station that 
Um, she reappeared. Yes, and, and reappeared. And stories like that. Before you know, there will be tourist boom in the Niger Delta. The whole world will be coming. Especially that we have one of the real forests that is expected to be protected. Niger Delta has a rainforest. How many rainforests are in the world? We have. You don't go to anywhere and see a waterlogged environment where you can put fire and go home and there will be no bushfire. Why don't we create a narrative around the meet around the rainforest of the Niger Delta that the world will now begin to look at it? Because now it's about climate change. And climate change is looking at renewable resources. How the rainforest is helping the world to produce oxygen, and how this oxygen is good for us to breathe, so that some of these fundings that they are spending in Amazon, they can bring it here. It will create employment. It will create a whole tourism district. Tourist cards. Tourist cards. You want to go to Russia? From the day you apply for visa, they will ask you if you have got a tourist card. And what it means is that they are asking you that, see, for your trip, you must pay one person to take you around. How many people have we trained to say that even this year in Agua, there should be a tourist guard? <laughs> we don't have. Then talk less of forest. Can't we have tourist guards in the forest where we say, as you are coming for tourism, this is a person, a specialist. Just tell the person that is coming that this person has been in this forest for 50 years. There are so many ideas, but I cannot solve it alone. And I cannot be in government. So I can, but I can use the little resources and the leverage that God has given me to draw back attention to the Niger Delta, draw attention to some of the issues that I'm passionate about. I, I buy machines. Machine buying is my, my, my passion. I buy machines at random, and I operate machines. Any machine that I see, if I don't know how to operate it, I, I feel sad. I want to operate any machine, if possible. And I operate a lot of them. I operate escalators, dozers, I operate everything. And I teach engineering, even though I'm not an engineer. Okay? So, when I meet engineers, I ask, and people who are engaged in luxury, I ask questions. Why is it that in Nigeria we love to buy luxurious goods as against goods that make luxurious goods? Why do we love to buy a Mercedes S Class? as against a machine that can make Mercedes X class. And that is the reason why we don't have factories in this Afri uh, Africa, because we love buying finished goods. For it. Why do we spend money to buy wristwatches of 20, 30, 40 million to tie on your wristwatch to check a time? When you have a phone that you can open and check a time, So, what is a car that a country for 50 years is unable to produce? A car. a car is a house with an engine and an exhaust. You put fuel and it goes. The engine is made up of engine block, a heavy metal that if it is exploding inside, the way the call pistons are exploding inside, it will not crack. So basically what you're doing is a compression, which we study in the university. You are compressing the gas and as long as, long as the compressed gas explodes, it makes boom. But the compression is con controlled within a chamber. So once you're able to do that, you will be able to now couple the other parts and it becomes engine. The thing is that the, our mentality has been deceived to the extent that we are looking forward to the next edition of Mercedes. So, what did the Chinese do that was supposed to be a lesson to us? Why can't we, the Koreas, when they started Nokia, um, Samsung, it was not the best of phones. But they consistent, consistent, persistent, persistent. 
Human beings must have some level of persistency and consistency. You do it over time, even if it is bad. The first edition is bad. Get feedback. Do the second edition. Get feedback. Do the third edition. Get feedback. By the time you do the tenth edition, we say, "Oh, this man is this." Perfect. So, my 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 passion is buy machines that fix machines that make machines, and it is becoming a success because. I bought machines, I buy machines. By the way, I can pick my chest and say, nobody in this country has the machines that make machines that I have as a person. Uh, and when I had the EFCC issues, they came and asked me, what's my property, what do I have? I don't have, I don't have a house. I don't have any, anything of luxury. I don't have a hotel, I don't have a, a yacht, I don't have Jet. I don't have um, what do you call it? shopping mall. I don't have anything. So nothing was seized from me. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because there was none to be seized. If they wanted to seize anything, they would go and seize the caterpillars I have. The caterpillars have no use to them. Okay? <laughs> and machines that make machines are too complicated for them. So even if I stole money, even if, which I did not do, even if I stole money, I will have spent the money to invest for the future of Nigeria, not for my personal aggrandizement. That case became an issue that I had to use also to prove that I had an accident. There was a, 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 um, an Israeli <coughs> owner of, uh, what is the name of this one? Okay, let me not mention it. Who I had a business deal with mm -hmm. Jonathan Tan. And he said he paid me money, 600 million, for a transaction. And then three days or four days, one month or more later, I called him and said, please come and have your money back. He said, What happened? I said, The transaction has been dealt with otherwise. So you need to take your money back. He said, Really, you want to give me the money? I said, Yes, I want to give you your money back. It doesn't belong to me. Take it. He called me and said, he stayed in Nigeria for 30 years and that nobody had ever done what I did to him. It helped me because I was able to use one event after the other to prove to the judge that I was not corrupt. They searched the globe to look for where I had private property. They used NFIU, look for all over the world where I had private property. I didn't have any. If I had any, all these Pandora papers and all that, it will reveal it. So there are many things that are used to prove my credibility. And if you are a judge and you are seeing this person narrating one event after the other to say, yes, this is this, this is this, this is this, this is this, you will be convinced that this man is beyond blemish. So a lot of things help me. But see, in life, what it's good to help people. Just keep helping people without asking for favor in return. The day that you will need help, somebody who you have not helped before will be the one to help you, not those that you have helped. And so I got help from unknown sources, not unknown gunmen. <laughs> People genuinely were interested in my case and people were giving me help that I felt like, yes, maybe what I did was not a, a waste at all. So the EFCC was relieving, but one thing I found out, I went to prison, I went to Kuge prison, and I realized that those guys are better than you and I who are free here. Because they are so religious that they, they, they sang every morning to my fear and joy and peace. Every morning these guys would just sing songs, Christian songs of praises, and will be so fulfilled. And I found friendship. In, I don't want to go into back there, but I found friendship in them. 
and then also in um, in EFCC cell, occasionally you will need to see somebody who needs 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 100,000, 200, like that. I need to get myself out of here and don't have shorty and all that. So I was maybe fulfilling some of my activism in prison by helping people. Okay, your matter is most less you take your own and go. So maybe maybe I could have been instrumental to get in maybe about 30 or 40 people out of out, out of this thing, including in Kuje. So I'm like a president there. I was were you pressured to like indicate it? Well, I don't want to go into the details of my interrogations. Thank God at the end of the day, the cause exonerated me. I want, I want the case on merit. It is one of those experiences that you wouldn't wish anybody to go through. Yes, everybody knows me as good luck's cousin. I am good luck. I preach good luck. I need good luck. I love good luck. Not because of financial gain or economic gain, but because I believe in good luck. Because I stay with him and I know him that the man is the number one incorruptible person in my life. Who has it? Good Lord Jonathan, how to speak? Good Lord Jonathan as a person does not consider financial gain in dealing with fights on his table. That you can take it to the bank. So, I felt like I will be the last man standing. I was able to relieve my experiences in the past and that when it comes to corruption, I was one of probably one of the least corrupt persons around the corner. And I was able to prove it that in this, based on my antecedent, this thing happened on social so day, and this was what happened, this was what happened. And uh, it went well with me. So, ND Hero, I was able to bring out all the documents and the history that I have built over years. Because otherwise, you see, I'm a very slim person, but I'm small, smallish. Everybody thinks I'm a child. Nobody knows that I'm 53 years. So as far as they are concerned, it's good Lord Jonathan that brought me up. I did me so much money. So everything I got was at what I I I I one of the most hard working Nigerians. I work so hard that I don't know Sunday Monday. I don't know Sunday. I don't know night and day. So I do everything. I do, I do, um, I walk in the afternoon place with machines. I go and start designs with, in, the, in the night with my computer. I do software. Anytime I don't have any, anything, the holidays, I find something to do. So, and then, I need, during the last time, one thing that went well with me was, I said that I was outside campaigning for social justice and prudence and that I needed to show when I'm in government that some of those things that I worked on that I'm able to do it. So I said that when good Lord becomes president and I am in capacity to do things, that I will not misuse power. And that is why throughout that era, nobody heard me having brutalized somebody, having oppressed somebody, having beaten up somebody, having cheated somebody. Or even, I did not even drive the good luck called Congo. One day, if he wants, if he wanted to go to New York and he wants me to see him in New York, I go and take a commercial flight and I go there. I don't know how the uh, Air Force One looks like. I'd never, I, don't, I didn't enter the Lord's car all that period. Lived a quiet life. So a lot of people didn't know me uh, uh, this thing. We really need, government really needs to do something, but the individuals like us, those of us who have made a little fortune from business ventures, we really need to put part of it into nature, put part of it into the environment. Because that's what happens elsewhere in the globe.